So today I wanted to share with you something that many of you have asked me about is how I do my makeup. So probably about three months ago, I actually got rid of all of my other makeup. I know that sounds a bit of a big step to do, but I wanted to swap to all natural brands. So I wanted to share with you today some of the brands that I've found. You might not have heard of some of them and also how I apply them to my face. So let's start with a little bit of moisturizer. I find if the skin is nicely hydrated, your foundations are going to sit a lot easier. I obviously had cleansed my face before. Um, the kind of look I'm gonna be doing today is what I call an, an everyday look. Saying that when I'm at work, to be honest, it's very minimal. So first off, Osmosis, it's a CC cream. So there is a tint to it. I apply it with fingertips, but there's also a mineral SPF. This kind of, for me, if I wanted to just kind of put one product on and go out of the door, this just blurs um, some of the, the dark circles and blends the skin tone in. As you can see, I'm liberally applying this with fingertips. There are other BB and CC creams out there. My preference are those that are using minerals rather than the synthetic SPFs. So I find that that kind of if I'm going to do the school run, I'd actually just do that. Um, but then to, to layer that up slightly, I have found a really amazing natural foundation. It's from a brand called Ilia. It's called True Silk Serum Foundation. I really like a dewy finish to my foundations. I don't want to look too caked on. Um, I do sometimes just put it on with fingertips if I'm in a hurry, but for the purpose of you guys, I'm going to be using a brush to try and do a more professional job of this. Before I actually specialised in skin care, um, I did train in, in makeup many, many years ago, and I do remember doing a number of bridal makeups as well, but I leave that to the makeup professionals nowadays and I focus on skin in my clinic. I, I like that look that I've not got makeup on and I find that this gives exactly that. I'm feeling that that's kind of covered up some of my pinkness that I get here and given me enough of an everyday coverage. Concealers. To me, concealers are really, really important and getting the texture of them, especially when you get to a certain age onwards and you've got the creasy lines around here, the concealer you choose can either make you look older than you actually are or more useful because we're kind of covering up the dark circles. My two current favourites, we've got Bare Minerals, Bare Skin. It gives a really good coverage. And then I've also got Absolution, this one here. They both give a really nice coverage, but I don't know whether you can see. They're a nice cream texture. That is my dog just tap dancing into the room, so I apologize. So I tap under. I find if you want to actually conceal, it's not just under here. I find if you make more of a, a this area, it gives, it still looks very natural, but it kind of, the light reflects off this part, making you look healthy. I always put a little bit into the creases of my nose. Definitely a little bit into that corner there. And I do use my concealers as a little bit of a, of a contour. So I like to add a little bit kind of along my jawline just to give a little bit of definition. That's kind of given quite a nice coverage. I'm, again, I don't know whether you'll be able to see that on camera, but that's kind of just a little bit here and just a tiny bit under there. For the purpose of showing the difference, you might see that this one is a tiny bit lighter. Fingers are great for blending. They're warm, they're natural. You wash them so you're not getting any bacteria stuck in them. And it's nice and quick. So again, creases of nose, and then just a little bit on my jaw to give a tiny bit of a contour. So I then like to add a little bit of colour. So some of my favourite bronzing kind of, of products. 
I'm a huge fan of Inica. Their mineral foundations and powders and colours and things are amazing and really pure. So this is a really lovely one. I'm not sure of the colour. Sunkist. There is also Bare Minerals. I know this looks super dark, but I find this one, which is called Fotan, it just gives a really nice, I don't know, warmth to the face. It doesn't come out half as dark as it is there. And then there's a range called Lily Lolo. This is Miami Beach. I love Lily Lolo products. Uh, really natural. I dropped this one probably about three or four times, but it goes to show how often I use it. Uh, but unfortunately, it's probably now seen better days and I, I need to invest in another one. I'm gonna do a tiny bit of a contour here with, I'm gonna use my, my well-loved Lily Lolo. And I just add a little bit of contour. And yeah, I do kind of come up to, to temples as well. Just to add a little bit of colour. And we'll match that up on the other side. And then I find just putting a little touch of colour across my hairline, it's a little bit of kind of shaping of the face as well. Something my mother always taught me is to do a little bit of a bronze underneath. She said, darling, it hides a double chin. So that is something, whether it works or not, it's just something that I've always done. So I always blend in a little bit of darker under there. I personally like a little bit of rosiness on my cheeks. I find it, it makes me feel healthier. It's kind of almost faking that glow, even if you're not feeling very glowy. So Cossa Sport, I have no idea if I've pronounced that properly. It's called Rush. It says it's a hyaluronic lip balm. However, it's great for lips and cheeks. It's a little stick like this. I literally add the tiniest bit and then I blend that in. So a tiny bit of, it's a great one for taking with you in your bag. I might have put a little bit too much on, but to me that's kind of, I think that's just enough of a, a healthy glow for the day. I like looking dewy and glossy and healthy, and I think a lot of my, my clients do as well. You can fake that with, I suppose, the highlightery kind of products, but there aren't many natural ones that I absolutely love. So I've got two here, Bare Minerals. It's a goldeny glow. Then there is a brand called RMS Beauty. This is actually a little balm. I think it's great for adding in just a little bit of highlight across cheekbones, like so. Uh, I like to put some down my nose, it kind of fakes where the light's going to be actually hitting your face, so in between brows and then maybe just across top lip slightly. Eyebrows. So I don't know whether you can see close up with my eyebrows. As I was at beauty college many years ago, 15, 20 years ago, um, we were all about plucking and tanning and you name it, we had to do it and we did it to the extreme to each other. So my brows, I don't pluck them at all. I haven't plucked them for seven years. This is the shape they're in. If I was to pluck these, I'm fairly sure they're not growing back. So this is probably quite 90s in their style, but it's just how my brows are. I recall the last time they were plucked um, by another therapist and they've never grown back. So brows, I like to kind of colour in slightly. I don't want to look like angry birds, but I want to look like I've got a little bit more definition. I find that a brow really shapes a face. Currently, I'm using Brow Master by Bare Minerals. It's not too sharp an edge. Uh, it's a twisty up. So, you know, if you're kind of drawing and it, it snaps, you've not got to try and find that pencil sharpener. So it's a really nice and easy one to use. So let's color in slightly. Who'd have thought brows were so important as we get older, hey? There is also a handy brush on the end of it. So an easy turn around. 
So I'm sure you'd be able to see the difference from a coloured in brow and a not done brow. Let's even that up. I have struggled actually. I haven't found many natural brow pencils. Um, if you've got any advice, any recommendations, always up for, for new recommendations. There we go. So I'm feeling reasonably even with that, with the brows. Eyeshadows. I find eyeshadows depends on my mood. I like either going quite pale and a red lip or maybe a little bit heavier uh, with a pale lip. Um, a couple of palettes that are my go-tos at the moment. Uh, a Lily Lolo, there's this one here, which has got just some really beautiful kind of taupes and browns and darks if I want to do a smoky eye as well. And then there is uh, another Bare Minerals. I'm particularly loving these top two naturally warm tones, which are great. Oh, and I've got this brilliant, it's a little Inica powder. It's called Pink Fetish. Uh, like that, you can, I know I should be using brushes, um, but you can then just give it a tap on. I might just use a brush to do the job properly. But I'm literally trying to show you exactly what I do rather than pretend that I use brushes. <laughs> I have probably two cups, glasses of brushes upstairs. I don't know what half of them are for, to be honest. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth. I will use a brush just to prove that I can use one. Just to add a little bit of warmth in the creases just to brighten up the face slightly. And then I am a huge fan of a black liner. And I've struggled for years to find a really good natural black liner. However, I found one, Absolution. This is their black liquid liner. I've got through so many over the years and I've actually found that my eyelids get really sensitive and particularly to, to uh, eye makeup that's not natural. That was one of the reasons that I was again looking for more natural things for my makeup. I was finding that I was waking up with puffy eyes and I ended up actually having to go to um, get my eyes tested and I was given some stuff for blepharitis. So I just thought this is ridiculous that, you know, there's no point in trying to make myself feel more confident and more beautiful by putting makeup on and it's causing me some issues. So these are not causing any issues. I've not put a black, li uh, black liner on in front of a camera before, so this could go horrifically wrong. It's a nice, simple little tip. It's not too long, it's not a brush, so it doesn't kind of flare out too much. Excuse the dog on my lap. I find if I start from middle of the eye and work outwards, Add a little flick, then I go back and continue colouring in the rest. If I'm feeling a little bit nervous, actually that's not bad, uh, I might kind of just dab the dots and then slightly go over. But it gives a really nice black coverage. I know there's so many other colours of liquid liner you can get. I think you've got to stick with the, the classic, a nice black flick. There we go, that's not worked too badly. I find as you come into this middle section, or sort of the inner section of the eye, you need a lot less on. And just go really light. Okay, there we go. So that, that was easy. Like I said, the kind of applicator on that, it's not too long that it's too fiddly, um, and it's a really nice texture to be able to, to do that with. Mascaras. 
I, I've always ended up having to go for the waterproof ones, which I don't really like the chemicals that are in them, to be honest. Um, but I think whether it's the shape of my eyes, but I don't know whether you've experienced this yourself, but you'll kind of put your makeup on in the morning and then kind of by midday you're thinking, I must still be looking quite sexy here. You go to the bathroom and you've literally got mascara everywhere and you think, why has, why has no one told me this? I found two good natural mascaras that actually I think they last and work really well. I don't know whether I'm going to pronounce this properly. Air Perez, I think. It's a waterproof mascara. They're saying that there's avocado in it. I'm guessing it's avocado oil. It does a really nice uh, coverage. The other one that I'm particularly loving is Inica Long Lash. It's a little bit more thick, I think. Um, but for the purpose of today, I'm going to go for this one. I think I've also learned over the years to help prevent some of the, the spider drop ha happening. Um, I often will only put mascara on my top lashes. It does separate them out. This is probably in need of replacement, actually. You know, this is over, it's probably about three or four months old and it has been well loved. But definitely with your mascaras, I think we're all guilty of not replacing them soon enough. I'm kind of pleased with that. That's, that's worked surprisingly well. Lips. I, I've got three different types that I wanted to show you. Firstly, I'm a huge fan of a lip gloss. Inica, it's a really great, there's no colour to it, it's a hydrating lip gloss. I do find you need to reapply it throughout the day. It's definitely not one that's going to stay on the lips. Another lip product that I always have in my bag and I've actually just kind of taken it skiing with me is Burt's Bees Lip Shine. It's a lot thicker, it gives you that, that dewy, glossy look to your lips, but I also find that it's, it's really hydrating and nourishing. You know, if you don't want um, a chapstick, these, these are a, a nice alternative. If I want a little bit of colour, Inica again, I seem to be using quite a bit of Inica um, today. It's kind of like a lip pencil but lipstick all in one so a nice easy long lasting nice natural color tan nude uh, and then if i wanted to go a little bit glossy this one is called tenderness i can't pronounce the name i'll put it below uh kajar wise maybe so let me just show you the inica that's the thing with the naturals, if you go over your lip line, it's not the end of the world. I was with a, a much stronger colour. I'd be a lot more careful. Uh, so that's the Inica. It blends in nicely, it's a really nice colour. But if I wanted to go a little bit more sultry and kissable, I'd probably put a little bit more gloss on, which we can go over. Actually, those two work really quite nicely together, but they can be used on their own as well. So I think I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. I hope you found that helpful. Um, please do ask me any questions below. If you've got any recommendations for natural uh, makeup brands that you've come across, I would love to know. Um, yeah, and I, I hope to see you again soon.